everybody, welcome back. Kicking through probability and continuous random variables. Um, this is day two of chapter six of CED unit four. How about that for a lot of variables and numbers? Anyway, I'm Mr. Hayes. I'm working through the stats medics um, curriculum. I use that in my classes here at West Chicago. And if you need the copy of the notes, they're down below. Obviously, drop likes, subscribes, comments. If I had a Patreon, I'd tell you about it now. So anyway, here we go. Um, important ideas of the stuff that we're taking off. Standard deviation, okay, is a discrete prob of a discrete probability distribution. What you're gonna end up doing here is this. It's very similar to a standard deviation formula. The difference here, however, is instead of just summing up the squares of the differences between our values and the means is that we're gonna multiply them through by the probability. What that does is two things. It kind of scales it by the number of items that we're getting for a particular discrete prob probability distribution. But it also does the division for us at the same time because you're dividing it through, because the probabilities are divided through by the number of items there for us. And then just as a reminder, um, sigma squared is going to be your variance then, okay? And that will come up as we continue to go through things the next couple of months. For probability for continuous random variables, because they're continuous, you can always find, no matter what two numbers you have, you can always go in between them, okay? It's like you can always go half, if you have half, no matter what your distance, you can always cut it in half. And so because of that, what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna find the area under a curve. If you've been through calculus, this will sound terribly familiar, okay? Um, so there's two different ones that we're gonna deal with now. There's uniform, which means that it's gonna be same all the way across, even though that, that doesn't necessarily look uniform. The things to remember there is that if it's a width of k, this, since this area has to equal 1, this height is going to be 1 over k. All right? Because remember, width and height would end up having to equal 1, which is how that one works. On a normal curve, this is, guess what? Z terms, Z's back. So you've got a normal curve here. So again, normal with a mean and a sigma here. And the reason why we're using those is because we're talking about a population. We know what the numbers are, and so it's not taking a sample. We're actually dealing with the numbers from the population. So because of that, we've got <coughs> the mu and the sigma there. So Z is equal to X minus sigma. Da, 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 da. And then you're either going to use table A or your normal CDF to go through and do that. All right? Okay, for the check your understanding, what we're gonna go through and you're gonna go through here and we're actually gonna talk about Minecraft. I know, shocking, ain't it? Now, um, among those who play Minecraft, the amount of time they spend playing is approximately uh, normal, is uh, during a day is approximately normally distributed. So if it says normally distributed, what you'll end up doing is that you can follow the normal curve. So the mean is going to be 150 minutes, standard deviation of 42.7 minutes. Suppose we choose a Minecraft player at random and let Y be the number amount of time that they spend playing Minecraft in minutes. Okay? So with that, and knowing that, since we're talking about normal dis distribution, you're probably going to end up having to use your Z formula here. Take a second, fill some of this out. We'll see you in a few. All right, so for the first question, it was uh, what type of variability is, what type of variable is Y discrete or continuous and explain? So it's going to end up being continuous. Why? Because you can spend any amount of time between 0 and 144 or 1440 minutes, which is 24 hours. And you can always go a little bit less or a little bit more than that. Okay, so because of that, it's continuous. Okay, somebody can always play a little bit less than you. So it's going to be continuous. Um, interpret standard deviation. So the standard deviation, and again, remember, this definition is one of those things that you kind of have to have int you know, integrated into your head. The amount of time spent playing Minecraft each day typically varies by 42.7 minutes from the mean of 150 minutes. So what you need to do here is you have to explain what we're talking about. You have to say it typically varies. State the standard deviation. And then from what? It's always going to be the mean. Does it matter? Absolutely. And I apologize, I just realized I was speaking really, really fast. So what is the probability of y being less than or equal to 90? So interpret this value. So we're looking for what's the probability that we pick somebody who plays Minecraft for 90 minutes or less. So the first thing that we have to do, let's go through and explain this. Um, so you make your normal curve. Remember, you have to do that. Draw it out, 
is that's going to help organize it to you. It's as much for you as it is for the grader, to be honest. Um, I like to say that this really kind of acts as a graphic organizer to make sure that you're not going in the wrong direction. Write out your z-score, so x minus mu over sigma. Um, plug in your numbers. So this would be 90 minus 150 divided by 42.7, and we get a negative 1.41. Now, in terms of doing this, you've got two options. Everybody loves a calculator. Now, remember, if you write it out, you need to write out the calculator command. And then up here, you're going to have to go through and rewrite it so that you know, so they know that you know that that's your lower value, your upper value, your mean, and your standard deviation. You get an answer of 0 0.0793. The other option is, is that you can look it up in table A which is, you remember the table where you kind of go look through and da, da, da. And you can say, I looked it up in table A, and that's where you get the number. Okay. I love my calculator too. However, in terms of time on your AP test, looking it up on table A, it's going to go faster. I had one student last year who was like, I'm just going to do it that way because I figure I can save myself probably 30 seconds a question, if not more, from having to write all this stuff down. And I was pretty impressed. That was a good thought. So anyway, so we get 0 0.0793. What does that mean? There is a 0 0.0793, or if you're old school, 793 ten thousandths probability of choosing a Minecraft player who plays 90 minutes or less a day. So right around 8%. So anyway, so what you're going to end up starting to do here is you're trying to find P of between 45 and 90. So we're going to go between 45 and 90. Now, if you're doing it with the table, what you'll need to go through and do, remember, is that you'll find this little value down here. So this number right here is basically that little part, okay? So we're subtracting this number from up here. We're, ta we're taking this number up here, and we're taking out that little tail. That little tail is just above half a percent, so 0 0.0069. So we subtract those two off, and that's from table A, and you get your value. So again, you've got, so it's, ne I mean, I'm not going to say it's negligible, but the interpretation there is a 0 0.0724 probability that choosing a Minecraft player who plays between, of choosing a Minecraft player playing between 45 and 90 minutes each day. So that, as I say, is that. We'll continue on with some of these ideas in terms of random and discrete probabilities. But again, our friend the Z-score has pretty much come back to stay. So anyway, with that, I hope everything's going well. If you have any questions, drop me your line below. Um, if anything's not working, same thing. Talk to you soon.